بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حق وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأنم علينا يا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قول أما بعد All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah Brothers and sisters here we are once again on this night to continue with the seerah and the biography of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And wallahi my brothers and sisters, as much as we hear this biography of this great man, even if we study it for a hundred times, you'll always find that thirst and the eager that you want to learn more about this seerah. Because it's a seerah of a great man, chosen by the greatest one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last week we spoke about the pre-battles before Badr. And we know the battle of Badr, one of the most famous battles. And one of the first great battles that it was a victory to the believers. And a distinguisher between the truth and false. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even named this battle as the Furqan, the distinguisher. That distinguished between truth and false. We spoke about those pre-battles. Before or the battles before the battle of Badr, and uh, we mentioned few of them, some in which the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had participated in, and that's what we refer to it as Ghazwa, and some the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did not participate in, and that's what the scholars refer to it as Sariya. Although Ghazwa and Sariya mean one thing, means one, uh, one meaning, which is a platoon or an army or a group of soldiers fighting. But the scholars refer to the battles that the Prophet ﷺ participated in as Ghazwa and those that the Prophet ﷺ did not participate in as Sariya. And we mentioned from those battles, one of them called Ghazwad Dhul Ushayra. And that was in the second year of the Hijrah, at the beginning or in Jamad al-Ula, just in the beginning of the year in which the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ came out, with 150 of his men, and some narrations say 200 of his men, and most of them were from the Muhajireen. When the Prophet ﷺ heard about a caravan that belonged to the people of Quraysh, with the leadership of Abu Sufyan traveling from Mecca towards Sham. And I mentioned that many times, that the people of Quraysh used to tr- trade between Sham, mainly Sham and sometimes Yemen. So they'll take some stock with them from Mecca, to Sham, sell it there, and then they'll bring stock from Sham and sell it in Mecca. And when they used to travel, they used to travel towards Sham, and they used to go past Medina, or near the Medina, because the Medina is between Sham and Mecca. And what the people of Quraysh used to do, especially the rich ones, they used to invest. They used to invest their money with someone, and they choose a group or a leader to lead that caravan, and then he goes and deals with it, sells their merchandises, and brings the Prophet back to them. Now with this one, this caravan, it was led by Abu Sufyan. And it had over 1,000 camels. Okay, so 1,000 camels, we're talking about a lot of stock. 1,000 camel, that's a lot of stock. And he had over 40 men with him. He had over 40 men with him. Now when the Prophet Muhammad wasallam heard that Abu Sufyan is coming out with a lot of camels and a lot of money, a lot of stock that belongs to most of it, to the people and the leaders of Quraysh. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam encouraged the believers, especially the Muhajirin, those who have been oppressed by the people of Quraysh, and those in which they've been tortured and unjustly taken their money and their wealth and their lands away from them, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu encouraged them to participate with him to go out on this platoon or to go out on this little army to attack the caravan Abu Sufyan 
and compensate themselves the loss that the people of Quraysh had made them lose. In that battle, the battle of Dhul Ushayda, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came out when Abu Sufyan was uh, traveling from Mecca to Syria. But unfortunately, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his army came out too late. And they did not get the chance to meet Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was already gone towards Syria. Now the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam waited for the caravan to come back. And usually takes months to travel from Mecca to Syria. So a few months after that, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam waited for the news for that caravan to come back. And this time the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a lot more prepared to attack this caravan. And Abu Sufyan, Abu Sufyan is one of the leaders of Quraysh. And Abu Sufyan was a very smart man. And a very wise man too. And later on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Abu Sufyan to become a Muslim. The news came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Abu Sufyan is coming back with the caravan that belongs to Quraysh with the prophets and the money and the stock and the merchandises and so on and so on which is a great opportunity for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the believers and especially the muhajirin amongst them to compensate themselves the loss they lost in Mecca because of the people of Quraysh. Now the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the news came to him of the near approach of uh, Abu Sufyan and his caravan, the Prophet والسلام, gathered the people in Medina. The Prophet والسلام, gathered the people in Medina. And listen to this point very carefully because you need to understand that so you could understand what happened later on. The Prophet والسلام, <coughs> gathered the believers in Medina and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, addressed them. And he mentioned to them his intention and why he's coming out and who is he attacking. The Prophet ﷺ said he is Abu Sufyan with 40 of his men, over 1,000 camels. Each of those camels are carried with a lot of stock and merchandises and they all belong to the people of Quraysh. He's only got 40 of his men. So whoever, whoever wishes, whoever wishes to participate and be part of this platoon or be part of this army to attack the caravan of Abu Sufyan, then let them join us. In other words, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did not force anyone to participate with him. He left it open. It was an optional participation. Whoever would like to be part of the army of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that will come out and attack the caravan Abu Sufyan, then they are more than welcome to come. And whoever is not interested, then they could stay behind. That's why a lot of the companions did not participate into this battle. That's number one. The other issue, the second issue, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa what did he say to them? I am going out to attack a caravan. How many people in that caravan? About 40 men, maybe a bit more than that. So what would an army of 313 people prepare for 40 men? Because 313... Believers participated with the Prophet ﷺ and accepted to come out with the Prophet ﷺ in that battle. 313, some scholars say 315, some scholars say 317, but between those numbers. When the Prophet ﷺ encouraged the Sahaba to come out and gave them the option, only 313 accepted to be with him. And the Prophet ﷺ told them, we are going to attack a caravan. How many people on that caravan? 40 people. So what would 313 prepare for 40 people? It does not need much preparation. But the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ did not know that this is going to lead to a greater expectation. And the Prophet ﷺ did not know that from behind attacking that caravan was going to lead to a war facing a thousand men. So this is a very important point to understand. That the battle of Badr, it initially was not a fight against the people of Quraysh. It was not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming out 313 of his men to go and fight 1,000 of the people of Quraysh. What the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out for is to attack a caravan. A caravan led by Abu Sufyan with 1,000 camels, with a lot of stock, with a lot of wealth, and only 40 men. And some scholars say a bit extra than that. So the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, not all of them participated. And secondly, they did not prepare themselves that high preparation because they're only going to face 40 men. There the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will come out to face that caravan. But Abu Sufyan was smart. And Abu Sufyan has the experience. 
And what Abu Sufyan did, he'll always have one or two men in front of him by one or two days looking out, is there anything going on? Or is there anyone preparing an attack? Or is there anyone wanting to come and attack his caravan? Because it's 1,000 camels, you know? 1,000 camels with a lot of stock, with a lot of wealth. You know, he needs to have an open eyes and open ears to know what's happening. Is there anyone that's willing to attack his caravan? And Abu Sufyan heard of the marching of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa him and his companions from Medina. So what did Abu Sufyan do? Abu Sufyan... Abu Sufyan, who was at that time, obviously, he was an unbeliever. He hired a man. He hired a man by the name of Damdam, and he sent him to Quraysh. He hired a man by the name of uh, Damdam bin Amr al-Ghafari, who was from the area on his way traveling, and he sent him to Quraysh. He said, go to Quraysh and inform them that Muhammad and his people are coming out to take your wealth. Muhammad and his people are coming out to take your merchandise. Muhammad and his people are coming out to take your money. So Dumdum, straight away, with his horse, uh, as fast as, as he can, he reached to Mecca. And when he arrived to Mecca, he went in the middle of the valley of Mecca, and on his horse started to call upon the people of Mecca and say, Al-Latima, Al-Latima. Latima means big problem, disaster, disaster. Everyone gather, everyone gather. So everyone in Mecca gathered. And everyone surrounded Dumdum. And then he said, Ya Ma'ashara Quraysh, all the people of Quraysh, your merchandise with Abu Sufyan, your wealth with Abu Sufyan, Muhammad had came out, him and his men, to come and take your wealth. So help Abu Sufyan, al ghoth al ghoth help Abu Sufyan, help Abu Sufyan. Now obviously this is their wealth. Some people probably invested their lifetime savings. These are the leaders of Quraysh. So now the Quraysh start to prepare itself to retaliate, start to prepare itself to attack the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I mentioned, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out for what? To attack a caravan that the number of the people of the caravan did not exceed over the 40 people. But there, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will come out to attack that caravan, not only Abu Sufyan, not only Abu Sufyan hired Dumdum and sent him to Quraysh to get help and support from Quraysh, Abu Sufyan changed his way. Abu Sufyan changed his road that he was taking towards Mecca. He usually goes through, next to Medina, through Badr to Mecca. And Badr is a place between Mecca and Medina. So what Abu Sufyan did, he took the long route. He took the long road. He took the long path through the coast. So he could keep away from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yes, Abu Sufyan managed to flee himself and to keep away the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or to keep the Prophet alayhi wa sallam from his caravan. He took the long way, the coast, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is on the other side waiting for Abu Sufyan. But there now the news comes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Quraysh is coming out. Coming out with what? 100 people, 200 people? Quraysh prepared an army to face the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with 1,300 of their men. How many does the Prophet ﷺ have? How many did the Prophet ﷺ come out with? The Prophet ﷺ came out with 313 companions. From amongst them, 82 from the Muhajirin. 82 from the 313 from the Muhajirin. The rest 230 were from the Ansar. The rest 230 were from the Ansar. So 313 in total. That's one. Secondly, the 313, they weren't prepared. How many horsemen did they have? They had only two. Why would they want to prepare themselves for only 40 men? They didn't know they're going to face an army of 1,300 men. And the other thing is they had 70 camels. 313 had only 70 camels. That each, that each camel had three companions riding on it, including the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who shared one camel with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Mirthad ibn Abi Mirthad. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, the leader, the commander sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet and Messenger did not have his own camel. In Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam was sharing one camel with two other companions, Ali and Mirthad. <coughs> And obviously, you put yourself in the position of Ali and Mirthad, you'll give the, you know, you'll give the priority to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ride that camel. 
So imagine the Prophet ﷺ is sharing a camel with you. What are you going to do? Are you going to ride and let the Prophet ﷺ walk? Of course not. So Ali and Mirtha told the Messenger of Allah, Oh Messenger of Allah, you ride all the way and we'll walk. You ride all the way and we'll continue walking. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most humblest human being, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, replied back to them saying, You are not better than me to gain the rewards of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Why should you just gain the rewards by walking and I sit on the camel? And I'm not better than you for me to ride on the camel and you walk. Who replied that? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger of Allah, the greatest human being, the one that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala described him with the best of manners, refused to ride all the way. He shared with two other companions and when they asked him and said, Oh Messenger of Allah, you ride all the way and we continue walking the rest of it. The Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam said, You are not better than me to get the rewards and I'm not better than you to continue riding. riding. Look at this beautiful, humble reply of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam divided the army into two main, into two main, uh, uh, into two main groups, into two main armies. The first one is Katibat al-Muhajirin, the army of the Muhajirin, which there were about 82 of them. And the other army was al-Ansar. The other army was the Ansar. The Katiba. Katibat al-Muhajirin, the army or the group of the Muhajirin, it was led by Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and it was called al-Uqab. The Katibat al-Ansar, the army of the Ansar, it was led by Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. And the leader usually is the one that carries the flag. The one that carries the flag. The one that carries the flag, their flag, both of their flags, their color was black. The main, the main companion, or the main companion who carried the flag of the main army, you know, there's the whole army, and then the Prophet ﷺ divided the army into just little platoons or little groups. The main companion who carried the flag of the believers, his name was Mus'ab ibn Umair. And the flag was, uh, the flag, flag was white. The main flag for the believers was white. And then there was two, Nabi ﷺ divided the army into two, other, uh, into two other groups, one with the leadership of Ali ibn Abi Talib and the flag was black, and the other one was with the leadership of Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad and the other flag was also black. Ali ibn Abi Talib led the Muhajirin and Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad led the Ansar radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And then he made another, he made two wings, one wing with the leadership of uh, Zubair ibn Awam who had a horse, and the uh, left wing was with the leadership of Al-Maqdad ibn Amr, who also had a horse. There was only two horses. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made on the right wing, uh, Al-Zubayr ibn Awam, and he made on the left wing, Al-Maqdad ibn, uh, Al-Maqdad ibn Amr. And he made Qais ibn Abi Sasa'a radiallahu ta'ala anhu to lead the re-army. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now divided them into different groups. And this is one of the strategies of war. You can't get the whole hundred thousand just go into one. You've got the right wing, you've got the left wing, you've got the front, you've got the rear. So the rear was Abu uh, uh, Qais ibn Abi Sasa. So you could imagine that now the army is divided into two main uh, uh, groups. One is the Muhajirin led by Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. One by the Ansar led by Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad. And there is two wings. One wing in which one horseman as Zubair ibn Awam on the right wing. And then another wing on the left Al-Miqdad ibn Aswad radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Or Miqdad ibn Amr. Uh, Al-Miqdad ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu on the left wing. And then you've got the re. You've got the re uh, uh, army or the re platoon led by Qais ibn Abi Sasa radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the general chief commander was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasallam was the head of the army. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam, as we mentioned, coming out to attack the caravan of Abu Sufyan and coming out with 313 of his men unprepared for to meet a thousand of the people, or 1,300 of Quraysh, there the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, after, after Abu Sufyan managed to flee and run away from the attack of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, the news will come to the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, that Mecca and the people of Quraysh are coming out with an army of 1,300 of their men. 1,300 of their men. Everyone in Quraysh, everyone in Mecca, 
that could not participate sent someone to participate on his behalf. Or paid money for someone to go and fight. That's how it motivated the way. Everyone participated in the war except Abu Lahab. All the leaders of Quraysh participated in that war except Abu Lahab. And what Abu Lahab did, he sent someone that owed him money to fight on his behalf. This is like their participation in the war. So beside Abu Lahab, all the big leaders and all the heads and the chiefs of Mecca came out. And, uh, and uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw them coming, he saw all the leaders of Mecca and Quraysh coming. He said, he is the leaders of Mecca coming. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you the most precious people of Mecca for them to fight you, for, for you to fight them. So that was a good thing for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fight and at least the leaders of Mecca are there for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fight them and weaken them through their leadership. Not only they had 1,300 of their men, but they had over 100 horses. In comparison with how many horses with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Two. Okay? And 600 uh, armors. Okay, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some narration said, every two companions used to share an armor or a shield. Also, they had over a thousand camels, where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had in return only 70 camels each. A camel, three companions were riding on it. So you could see the outnumbered, or how, how the Quraysh outnumbered the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in numbers. They outnumbered the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam in weapons. They outnumbered the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam in horses. They outnumbered the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam in camels. And over all that, they came out prepared. Quraysh came out for a war. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not come out for a war. So that was an embarrassing moment for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That was an embarrassing moment for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, where the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam promised the companions, or he came out with the companions to fight a caravan that the number of the people of the caravan did not exceed 45 or so on. And now the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam would turn to them and say, okay, now we're going to fight an, an army that exceeds their number a thousand people. Before we get into that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions... He mentions how the people of Quraysh came out bataran wa ra'a nasi wa yasudduna an sabili la they came out with pride they came out with a lot of pride you know to come and stop and uh, and, and, and pre, uh, to come and stop and and deprive and stop people from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the only reason that Quraysh came out is to fight the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam why because the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam calls to Allah and the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he said, Oh Allah, look at the people of Quraysh coming out, challenging you and challenging your messenger. Challenging you and challenging your messenger. The only reason they came out is to challenge Allah and to challenge the messenger of Allah. Now when Quraysh came out, they came out with 1,300 of their men. 1,300 of their men. On their way from Mecca to Badr, on their way from Mecca to Badr, which Badr is a will, and the area of Badr is just in between Mecca and Medina. On the way, Abu Sufyan sends the news to uh, the leaders of Quraysh that you came out for the sake of protecting your caravans and your merchandise and your wealth. Now your caravan and your merchandise and your wealth is protected. So there's no need for you to continue with this war and to come out and exhaust the men and lose money and so on. The reason that he came out is to protect your world, to protect your caravan. Abu Sufyan, after he found himself safe, and after he found himself far away from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he's near Mecca because he took the opposite way, he sent the message to them, there is no need for you to come out. And the reason that he came out is to protect your world. Now your world and your caravan and your merchandise is protected. So go back where you came from. When the news came to that, 300 from Bani Zuhra, 300 men from Bani Zuhra who were part of that 1,300, they said, if that's the reason, then there's no need for us to go part, participate into this war. Why should we go and fight? We came out for one reason, and the reason that we came out for, it doesn't exist anymore. We came out to protect the caravan, and now the caravan is safe. So 300 out of the 1,300 turned their backs and went back to Mecca. So the army of Quraysh from 1,300 reduced to 1,000. But 1,000 in front of 313 is still a great number. It's still the companions <coughs> and the believers are outnumbered by the non-believers by three times. And that's not a little number. And there also, while the 1,000 of the people of Quraysh were marching towards Badr, the news amongst them 
and amongst the leaders, you know, they start to whisper between them, they're afraid if they come out, Bani Kunana, which are a tribe from amongst the Arab, Bani Kunana will come from behind and attack them. So they'll have Muhammad attacking them from one side, and Kanana attacking them from the other side, because there was a huge animosity and great enmity between Quraysh and Bani Kunana. So Iblis La'anahullah came in the appearance and the figure of Suraqa, and Suraqa was one of the chiefs and heads of Bani Kunana. Iblis came in the appearance of Suraqa, and he came to him and said, I guarantee that Bani Kunana would not hit you from behind. So he could give them that safety and that comfort, because they were scared that if now, because of their enmity and the war between them and Bani Kunana, Bani Kunana will take advantage of the situa- situation of Quraysh fighting Muhammad, they'll come from behind and attack them. So Iblis comes in one of the figures of the chiefs of Bani Kunana saying to them, I guarantee you that Bani Kunana would not participate and Bani Kunana would not harm you and Bani Kunana would not come from behind you and attack you. So this motivated them. And also, when the news came to uh, Abu Sufyan, uh, uh, when the news came from Abu Sufyan to Abu Jahl, that turn you back and go back to Quraysh, Abu Jahl, la'anahullah, with his pride and his arrogance, he said, no, we're going to continue going all the way to Badr, and we're going to drink there, and we're going to get the dancers to dance for us, and we're going to slaughter every day the camels, and we're going to stay there for three days, and let all the Arab hear of us, and let all the Arab stay fearing us. Because the Arab used to fear Quraysh. Quraysh had its respect. Quraysh was a tribe with a lot of respect and a lot of fear, because they were strong and they were firm. So Abu Jahl said, no, even though that our caravans are safe, and even though our merchandises that we came out for is safe and protected, we're going to continue marching until we arrive to Badr, and we're going to stay there for three days, and we're going to slaughter the camels every day, and we're going to drink the alcohol and wine, and we're going to get the dancers to dance for us, and let all the Arab hear of us, they still fear us, and now Quraysh is strong. This is the arrogance of Abu Jahl, la'anahullah, the one that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who mentioned about him, the Fir'aun of this Ummah. Now, let us go back to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Quraysh is determined. Quraysh is determined. Quraysh is prepared. Quraysh is experienced in the war. Quraysh are a lot more organized than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when it comes to the army and so on, as the Prophet sallallahu just recently established his state. Quraysh has been there for hundreds of years. Quraysh is a lot more richer. Quraysh is a lot more experienced. Now let's come back to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this embarrassing situation that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in. What embarrassing situation is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in? The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam came out with 313 of his men to attack a caravan that the number of the people of that caravan did not exceed 40 or so. Now, Coming with that, hearing that there's an army of 1,000 prepared soldiers with over 100 horsemen, with over 1,000 camels, with over 600 shields, with over this and that. Now the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is in an embarrassing situation. I told you we are coming out for something. Now we are facing something a lot bigger and greater than what I told you. So there the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ held a shura with the most uh, prominent and the most influential leaders amongst the companions. And the other well-known one, Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman was not there at that time. So it was Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, uh, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, and the rest of the great companions. There the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decided amongst the prominent and the leaders of uh, the, uh, the believers is to continue with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded with and to continue with the war. Because if the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why that situation? There's advantages and disadvantages. The advantage that he'll walk away is he's not going to face war. But what's going to happen? That's going to strengthen Quraysh against him. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turns his back away from this war, this unexpected war, it's only going to give Quraysh the upper hand on the Prophet And not only that, that will encourage Quraysh to attack Medina. And not only that, the reputation of Medina will be so humiliated amongst the Arab, that will encourage the Arab also to attack Medina. So there's a lot more disadvantages 
for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to walk away from this war, then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam continuing and fighting in this war. And Allah subhanahu wa taala He says in the Quran al-Karim, "Kama akhrajak Rabbuka min baytika bil haq, wa inna fariqa min al-mu'minin lakarihun yujadilunak fil haq baada ma tabiyana kaanna ma yisaqun ila al-maut wa miyanzurun." Allah subhanahu wa taala He says, "The way that Allah subhanahu wa taala took you out of your house with the, with truth and justice." Amongst the believers, and Allah is referring to the believers how they left Medina, for the truth, amongst the believers are disliking the concept of war. No one wants to fight. No one wants to be put in a situation where they'll lose their life or lose their wealth or even be hurt or losing their hands or losing, losing inner of their limbs and so on. Amongst the believers, there are those who dislike the concept of fighting. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, they dispute with you over the truth. After the truth is clear to them. It's like they are taken to death in front of them and they could see it. In other words, don't dispute with the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Do not dispute with the Messenger of Allah. You came out for Allah, you continue doing what pleases Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't turn your intention. Do not change your intention. Your initial intention was not just for the caravan. Your initial intention was the pleasure of Allah. So whether it's the caravan or fight, fighting the people of Quraysh, at the end of the day, you are there for who? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regardless. And this is a good lesson for the believers that when we do things, we do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't do it because of things, we do it for Allah. Because at the end of the day, whether we obtain those things or lose them, if our intention is for Allah, Allah at the end of the day will reward us whether we got it or lost it. This is the way of a believer. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered the army, 313. Came out with one thing, now... They're going to face a lot bigger and a lot more greater thing than what they came out for. And there the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains the situation to the believers. And he says, oh believers, we came out for something, but now this is what we are facing. We came out to attack Abu Sufyan and his caravan, but now Quraysh had came out with all its leaders, investing all its money and all its leaders and all its potential precious you know, uh, horsemen and generals coming out to fight us. This is the situation we're in. What do you want? So the first man who stand was Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Who say the words that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa want to hear. And he gave full promise to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa And pledge that he stands by the Prophet alayhi salatu wa to the end. After Abu Bakr sat down, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu got up. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said and spoke and addressed and he said what the Prophet ﷺ will be delighted with. And he said the best of words to show his firm and strong stand. After Umar, it was Al-Miqdad. Al-Miqdad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Al-Miqdad bin Amr. And he said beautiful words. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, continue with what Allah Azza wa Jal had commanded you with. By Allah, we are with you. By Allah, we would never ever say to you what the children of Israel, Bani Israel, told Musa, when Musa ordered them to go and enter Jerusalem, they said, اذهب أنت وربك فقاتلا إنها هنا قاعدون Go you and your Lord fight, we are sitting over here by Allah, or messenger of Allah who say to you, اذهب أنت وربك فقاتلا إنا معكم مقاتلون Or messenger of Allah will say to you, Go, you and your Lord fight. We are coming with you to fight. And then he said, O messenger of Allah, O messenger of Allah, by Allah and by the one that sent you by the truth, if you go through Barq al-Ghimad, and that was one of the most hatred areas and, and, and valleys for the people of, uh, of, of the Arab, it had very harsh it was a very harsh town and a very harsh valley that many of the Arab used to avoid going through. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, by the one that sent you by the truth, وَالَّذِي بَعَثَكَ بِالْحَقِّ If you go through Barq al-Ghimad, we'll continue fighting with you and we'll continue following you until the end. This is the response of who? Al-Miqdad radiallahu ta'ala. Now who stood up? Abu Bakr. Then Umar. Then Al-Miqdad. Those three, where they come from? They are from the Muhajirin. They are from those who migrated from Mecca to Medina. How, how many of them are there in this army? They are the minority. There's only 83 of them. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to hear the majority. Who are the majority? The Ansar. The Ansar were about 230 of them. 
And they are the ones who, why should we, you know, why should we fight for someone else's war? You know, because the muhajirin are the ones who've been oppressed by the ones, uh, they are the ones who've been oppressed by the people of Quraysh. They've got that feeling, they, they have something, you know, there is, there is something for them. These people for us kicked us out of our towns, took money from us, they've got a reason. But the people of Ansar, why am I fighting someone else's war? You know that? Why am I getting myself into someone else's problems? So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard from the muhajirin. But I want to hear from the Ansar. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, May Allah reward those who spoke. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, with his wisdom, he said, Give me an advice, O people. Ashiru alayya ayyuha nas. I want your advice, O people. So Sa'd ibn Mu'adh radiyallahu ta'ala an. Sa'd ibn Mu'adh radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the head of the Ansar. The one when he passed away, what did the Prophet sallallahu say? He is a man that the throne of Allah shook because of his death. Sa'd ibn Mu'adh radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He got up, he was the head of the Ansar. And he was a respected chief amongst the Ansar. He got up and he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, are you referring to us? Are you hinting to us? Because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Give man advice, O people. Who are you trying to say, us? So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Yes, you. I'm referring to you, Ansar. You're the majority. And there's another thing here. When the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam took the pledge, from the people of Medina, that the Prophet ﷺ migrates to them from Mecca to Medina and lives amongst them. He took the pledge from them that they'll support him and fight for him in Medina. He did not take the pledge from them outside Medina. So the Prophet ﷺ was now dealt in a very, very embarrassing position. So Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, are you referring to us? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Yes. So Sa'ad said this beautiful words. Oh, Messenger of Allah, we believed in you. We believed in everything you came with. We testified in the truth that you came with. And we had given you our pledge, our promises, that will stand by you and obey you and never disobey you. Oh, Messenger of Allah, I say on myself and on behalf of all the Ansar, even though, even though that you think, he mentioned it to him, even though you think, that we gave you the pledge that we're only going to support you in our town, in our city. And we know that now we are outside that. But even though I say on, the, my, on my behalf, on the behalf of the Ansar, O oh, Messenger of Allah, continue with what we want. By Allah, the one that sent you by the truth, will continue stand by you. Even if you go through the oceans, we're going to continue behind you. Look at this strong stance. O oh, Messenger of Allah, Go. And continue with what Allah had ordered you. By Allah, if you go through the ocean, the seas, we are behind you, O Messenger of Allah. And you'll find not even one man from amongst us that will turn his back away. O Messenger of Allah, do you think we are the type of people that we don't like to see the army, the enemy? You think we're the type of people that likes to run away from war? O Messenger of Allah, by Allah, we are men who stand firm in war. And we are men that are honest when it comes to fighting. Maybe today, O oh Messenger of Allah, look at this beautiful word. Maybe today, Allah wants to show you who we really are. Maybe today is the day that Allah Azza wa Jal wants to really show you who we really are. You probably don't know us yet. Fair enough, O oh Messenger of Allah. You've only known us for the last two years. No problems. Today, Allah probably wants to show you who we really are. نَحْنُ subron فِي الْحَرْبِ صدق في اللقاء. We are people who are patient when it comes to fighting. And we are indeed firm when we face the enemy. This is the words of who? Sa'd ibn Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then he said, Sir ala barakatillah. Oh, messenger of Allah, with the blessings of Allah, continue and march. See, this is, you know, this is the stance of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This is the stance of the Sahaba. Sometimes we say, you know, I wish I was around the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. These days when you say to someone, look, we're going to do this. And there's a bit of changes. Why didn't you tell me that from the beginning? Why are you not being transparent? Why are you not straightforward with me? Akhi, we want to do it this way. Now it changed. No, I don't accept it. You have to be straightforward from the beginning. What would you do if you were at the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? You wish that you were around the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. I remember one of my teachers when he used to teach us the seerah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on his soul. He used to always say to us, you students love to be at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. I know every single one of you wishes that he's around the Prophet ﷺ. And then he used to always say to us, don't you ever wish you were around the Prophet ﷺ. So I used to always wonder, why did he used to say that? 
When you read the seerah, you realize, if I was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, would I, would, would I be really a firm believer? They'll really stand firm by him or I'll turn away from him. These people went through so many tough tribunals and so many tough moments and so many tough tests. And now, you know, what makes me, would I be from those believers who stand firm by the Prophet ﷺ? I've got so much weakness in me. Would I be that believer that will stand firm in a moment like this? When the Prophet ﷺ told me one thing and then it ends up another thing. Would I be that believer that will stand firm by the Prophet ﷺ? See, these are the tests. These are the moments that you really know why these companions were really companions. You wonder why Allah Azza wa Jal called them and mentioned them. Radiallahu anhu wa an. Allah is pleased from them. You know, these are the stands, my brothers. We could all say, I'm a believer. I'm a mujahid. I'm a strong mu'min. But that's all talk. Where is the action? Where is the action like Sa'd ibn Mu'adh? When he stood at that time and he said, maybe today Allah wants to show you who we really are. Today maybe is the day that will show you that we are really strong men. Men who really stand firm when it comes to the time and the moments of standing firm. Radiallahu ta'ala an. There the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt that comfort. Felt that comfort after what? After he was so uncomfortable. It's embarrassing for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Felt so uncomfortable. Uh, at one stage, now the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after what he heard, especially from Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, and on the behalf of the people of the Ansar, there the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, he was so comfortable and he said, Siru wa abshiru. Now let's all march with good news, having good thoughts, having good intentions. Allah had promised me one of two things. Allah had promised me one of two things. What are the one of two things? It's either you have victory or you enter the Jannah. This is how the believers used to think. This such thing called losing, it doesn't exist in the dictionary or in the mind of the Prophet ﷺ. Because how could you lose if you are with Allah? How could you lose if you are with Allah Azza wa Jal? How could an army lose if the army is fighting for the sake of Allah? It's either you win or enter the paradise. But this thing, losing, it doesn't exist. So the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he says, Continue marching by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have good thoughts and hopes in Allah azza wa jal. Allah had promised me one of the two things. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is I, if I could see the dead places or I could see the dead bodies and corpse of the disbelievers. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, it's like I could see them dead here. I could see Abu Jahl dead there. I could see uh, Abu Mukhalaf there. I could see Utbah dead there. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam later on he said, that's where Abu Jahl is going to die. And that's where Fulan is going to die. And that's where Fulan is going to die. The companion said, Ba Allah, after the battle, exactly where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Fulan and Fulan will die, we found them dead exactly where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed at. And there the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued marching towards Badr. And the non-believers are on their way from Mecca to Badr. So who arrived to Badr first? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, he arrived to Badr before the non-believers by a short while or moment. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived to Badr, Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam wanted to find out the news exactly. How many people came out from Quraysh? Uh, how well prepared are they? What's in their minds? What's their plans? Because according to the information that you have, you base your strategies and you pay, base your plans on the information that you have. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr, when they arrived to Badr, they went out, them two, looking and investigating and asking to see the situation. There the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will see an old Bedouin. An old Bedouin. And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu is with the company of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam will ask that Bedouin, he'll say to him, have you heard anything about Quraysh and Muhammad? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Muhammad, he knows, he knows his news. But the reason the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that, so the old man does not doubt the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who he is. Like Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is like an outsider. So that's why he said to him, do you know anything about the people of Quraysh and what Muhammad? So this old man said, why should I tell you if I don't even know who you are? Tell me where you came from, and I'll tell you uh, the, the, the news I heard. So the Prophet ﷺ said, if we tell you where we came from, would you tell us? So he said, yes. So the Prophet ﷺ said, we'll tell you where we came from, but tell us exactly what he heard. He said, this old man, he said, I heard that Muhammad and his companions came out on such, such day. And if they did come out on that such, such day, they should be arriving today in Badr. 
And then he said, I heard that the people of Quraysh, Quraysh had came out on such, such day. If it's true what I heard, they came out on that day, they should be arriving exactly at that time. He's got the experience, how long it takes from Badr to Mecca, and how long it takes from Badr to Medina. So after the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ heard that, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam wanted to walk away, so the old man said, he didn't tell me where he came from. So the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, we are from water. We are from water. So the Nabi Wasallam left. So this old man sat down thinking, Ma, because there's a lot of areas in the Arabian Peninsula, the areas begin with ma, with water. What the Prophet Wasallam referred to, he is from water, he's from Simon. You know, this is where he's created from. You know, from a sperm of a man and a woman. And this is originally a liquid. So the Prophet ﷺ meant that that's where we're originally from. So this man continued to think, okay, ma, is it ma al-Iraq, ma kaza, ma kaza, is it these areas? So the Prophet ﷺ didn't lie, but at the same time, this man did not understand the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. There the Prophet ﷺ will settle in Badr, in a world. There's a big world in Badr, and that's where people used to drink from. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will send Ali ibn Abi Talib, as Zubair ibn Awam, and Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, three companions from, uh, uh, from the Muhajirin, to go and keep their eyes open to see, hear whatever they see, or whatever they hear of the news of Quraysh. And while they were there, they captured two young kids. They captured two young children. And they brought them to the tent of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. While the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam was praying, this t- they, they walked in with these two children and the rest of the Sahaba sat down. They were hearing them, telling them, who are you, who you with? Are you with Quraysh or with Abu Sufyan? Because they wanted to know if these two kids with Abu Sufyan, let us go and attack the caravan. But if Abu Sufyan is too far away from us, why should we attack him? So they continued hearing them. Are you with? They said, we are with Quraysh. And the Prophet Sallallahu was praying. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi can hear what's going on behind him. So they continued hitting them because they wanted them to say, we are with Abu Sufyan. So the kids said, we are with Abu Sufyan. Because they were getting best, 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 best. They were saying, we are with Quraysh, we are with Quraysh, we are with Quraysh. And every time they say, we are with Quraysh, the Sahaba will hit them, say, no, say the truth, you are with Abu Sufyan. So at the end, the kids said, we are with Abu Sufyan. So when the Prophet ﷺ finished, he said, amazing to you. When they said the truth, you hit them. And when they lied to you, you left them alone. They are with Quraysh. Where is Abu Sufyan? Abu Sufyan is gone somewhere. You know, Allah alam where he is now. And then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his hikmah. Look, this is the akhlaq of Nabi alayhi wa sallam. Never held a grudge or hatred towards him. When he brought him and he said, how many people, in, how many people in, in your army? He wants to know exactly how many people in the army. So they said, we don't know, but there's a lot. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, if you don't know the number, how many camels do you slaughter a day? So they said between 9 and 10. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the army or the enemy is about a thousand, between 900 to a thousand. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calculated that for each camel, 100 people eat one camel. So if there's 9 to 10 camels every day slaughtered, that means that's about 900 to a thousand people. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also asked them, who else is in the army? Those two kids. Who's in the army? So they said this Utbah and Shayba ibn Rabi'ah, Abu al-Bakhtari ibn Hisham, Hakim ibn Hizam, Nawfal ibn Khuwailid, Al-Harith ibn Amr, Tu'ayma ibn Adi, Al-Nadr ibn Harith, Zam'a ibn Aswad, Abu Jahal, Umayyah ibn Khalaf. And they mentioned the names of the chiefs of Quraysh. Every single one of them was there. The early ones that were there was Abu Sufyan. He wasn't there because he was in the caravan. Abu Jahal. The rest of were all there. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah, he is Mecca. Mecca came with the best of his chiefs to be slaughtered. Best thing, kill their leaders and let them break. Let them break down. Let them, you know, weaken themselves. And there the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to comfort the believers. Allah azza wa jalla that night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down the rain. That rain was a rahmah, mercy to the believers, but it was a disaster on the non-believers. This rain came down for the believers in which the believers drank from and cleaned themselves from. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the easy rain for them, for them to comfort themselves. And on the non-believers on Quraysh, it was a disaster. It was all wet and it was all muddy for them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforted the believers that night. And not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he says in the Quran al-Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the believers sleep. Allah made the believers that night sleep. They slept the most comfortable sleep. So the next day they are prepared to fight in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived to the well of Badr, there was water. So where did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam settle 
and make all the companions settle on one side. On the other side, opposite to where Quraysh will be standing. So one of the companions, his name is Al-Hubbab ibn Mundir. He came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, oh Messenger of Allah, I want to ask you a simple question. Where we're standing right now, in this position, did Allah order you to stand here? Or is it your own experience and strategy? So he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that's my own experience and strategy. This is my understanding stand here. So Al-Habbab ibn Mundir said, okay, Messenger of Allah, since Allah did not order you, then I've got another opinion. My opinion that we stand on the other side, make the will of Badr behind us, instead of making the will of Badr in front of us, and in front of the, the enemies. This way, we could block the people of Quraysh from drinking from the will. We drink and they don't drink. We have water and they don't have water. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted the idea that Al-Habbab radiallahu ta'ala anhu offered. And this shows the character of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he is a prophet, but sometimes the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam acts as a human being. And he's got his own opinions. And his opinions could be right or wrong as a human being. And that's why Al-Habbab ibn Mundir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, our oh, messenger of Allah, take my opinion. Let the will of Badr be behind us. This way, we'll drink and they don't drink. And we have support of some water and they don't have any support of water. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took the opinion and the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam stood there. And then Sa'd ibn Mu'adh came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam and he said, our oh, messenger of Allah, O oh, Messenger of Allah, why don't, we build, why don't we build for you a tent? Let that tent be our headquarters. You'll be in that tent and we'll have young men surrounding you and guarding you and protecting you. If, and look at these beautiful words of Sa'ad. He said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us victory, we'll come back here. And alhamdulillah, Allah had given us the victory that we all want. But in case, if Allah gives us the opposite, he did not say, he did not say loss. But he said, if Allah gives us the opposite, at least you'll have people that'll take you back to our brothers. And then he said beautiful words. Look at this beautiful. He said, because amongst the people of Medina, we have brothers who did not come with us today. But these people do not love you more than us. And know that we love you more than them. They also love you too. At least if we get the opposite, in other words, we don't get the victory, you go back to them and you have their support and you'll be amongst them. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted that and he appointed Sa'ad ibn, ibn Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu to build the tent of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam and to be the chief and the commander of <coughs> those companions who will guard the tent of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now this moment it is the beginning of the Great War and the Battle of Badr that insha'Allah will continue with next week to hear about the great miracles that will take place in that great battle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguish between the truth and the false, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who listen and hear, act upon what they listen and hear. Subhanak Allahum bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. To listen to or download more Islamic lectures, please visit www.islamicmedia.com.au.